Beyonce, Aisha Tyler, um, Sharon Stone, Sharon Osbourne. He just flew back from France. He did the Cannes Film Festival. Um, he worked with Naomi Campbell over there. I mean, if you're lucky, he'll share with you some of his little celebrity uh, gossip, his little tidbits back mm -hmm. behind the scenes. But um, he's just incredible. He's been some. His work has been featured in some of the top magazines. Hamptons Magazine, Vogue, Elle, and Style. So we're really, really excited to have him here and um, have him teach you some of his backstage tips and tricks so that you will have the tools to become your own personal makeup artist. Sound good? Yes. Yeah? So the class is going to be about an hour and a half, two hours long. Okay, Ricky's going to come here and do a, a uh, demo on our lovely model. And then afterwards, myself and uh, the team of national artists will assist you in recreating that look. Sound good? Yes. You guys ready? Yes. Yeah? Well, let's welcome Ricky Wilson. Hi. How's everyone? So I, I think I, I should. How many of you are using Dior? Hey? First time Dior? Not even the mascara? <gasps> oh, well, let me tell you what a beautiful brand this is. Let me first see how much time I have to talk. Oh, good. We've already done some prep work, but let me tell you something really interesting and great about this brand that I love called Dior. Um, it's for everyone, okay? Um, the shade ranges and the colors have expanded. Now we have shades that are darker than me, and we have shades that are like light as my model friend Coco Rocha. She's like super, super transparent light. You know her. So we have something for everyone. Um, all these different brands send me stuff because when you start working in the magazines and they see your name in the tips and tricks, um, and they see your name, then you know they send you stuff. So my super at home, he's always like, oh, you know, you got another box. But in Dior, you can create a beautiful look using 100% Dior as well as the skin treatment. So those of you that are new to Dior, I welcome you, and I'm gonna give you my top products because everyone always wants to know what I love most about Dior. So I'm gonna break it into skincare, makeup, and fragrance. My must-have go-to products that anytime I'm working, I always have these products. When I go and do a wedding, I always bring a fragrance bar. And the reason being is because everyone's always stressed out and they're getting ready and made up. They, they have on a beautiful dress, they have on their hair and their nails and all this stuff and then they run out and they forget their fragrance. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna talk about when you're dressing and I'm gonna show you my favorite Dior fragrance, okay? So let me just hop up here and I am going to, yeah, you, no <laughs> feedback. Get my hands cleaned off here. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what we've done to prepare the skin. Preparing the skin is very important. Yes? The music, no good. The music, right? No, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can, because I feel like I'm rock and roll dancing, right? So, let's see, we're gonna figure out if we can do, um, if not, I'm just gonna project a little bit louder, okay? So, to prepare the skin is so important for me as a makeup artist because I don't like to put makeup on skin that, I, that doesn't feel like silk, that doesn't feel like a baby, okay? When your skin feels like a baby, oh, that's good, yeah. yeah. So when your skin feels like a baby, the makeup is gonna go on so much smoother. And me as a makeup artist, and I know that we live in a, a social media driven makeup world right now, where the makeup is very heavy, I don't do that makeup unless it's requested of me. So I can do it, but it's not my personal favorite makeup aesthetic. So I don't like to put the, the concealer all over the face and the foundation. I don't like to put the heavy highlighters and the strong contours and all those things. I, like I said, I can do that, but if you look at my body of work, the only thing you need to do is type in Ricky Wilson Makeup Artist in Google and you'll see like 30 pages of stuff that I've done and you'll see the aesthetic that I, I follow and it's very natural. I, I can do eyes, I can do a lip, but the face makeup is very natural. And I feel like that sometimes people feel like they need more makeup than they do. I was in Atlanta last week and the, there was this woman that came and she was new to Dior. She said she used an Estee Lauder foundation and a Makeup Forever foundation over it. In my opinion, there's no reason that you need two foundations layered on top of one another. And she took the makeup off and I whispered to her, I said, babe, I'm gonna be very honest with you. 
you have no makeup on right now and you look so much better. Like, that makeup was aging her, it made her look older, it made her skin look textured and crackly, and you don't want to see that. Like, you know, you don't want somebody coming up to you saying like, oh my god, I love your foundation. Your foundation should be invisible, okay? My next big trip is I'm going to Korea, and it's going to be fabulous. So I'm practicing my Korean, so if anybody is Korean in here, um, I would like to have a little... Um, session with you, but the Korean beauty, the transparent beauty, uh -huh. and the Korean beauty trends are so in right now, and I cannot wait to get to Seoul so we can um, do a lot of beauty makeup, so I'll be there with Dior, okay? So, top three skin products that I have tested and tried and true on everybody, I don't care what age you are, um, I'm going to share with you now. So, uh, Dream Skin, has anyone heard of Dream Skin before? Okay. Dream Skin is the perfect thing that you put before your makeup. I'll show you what it looks like, and we've already done it, but Dream Skin is a great product if you have blotchiness, redness in your skin, if you have large pores, if you have foundation that doesn't glide on your skin perfectly. Dream Skin is one of my products that I use on everyone. It does have a little bit of color in it, but it's not gonna alter your makeup. Like, I have somebody that's like a medium skin tone. She's a beauty editor at Elle Magazine, and she always says, Ricky, every time somebody does my makeup, when they try to match my foundation, it's always off. I paint the dream skin on with the brush, and she looked in the mirror, and she was like, oh, you got my foundation perfect, first try. And she didn't know that she didn't have foundation on. So dream skin is a skin perfecter. Uh, the other thing that I always use, because a lot of people use eye cream, a lot of people use eye cream, but then you still have issues, puffiness, darkness, like lines, wrinkles. So I like to use the Capture Eye Serum. This is what I like to call Brighten and Tighten, okay? So if you have puffiness, if you need to snatch your eye, like I say, um, you want to use this. The eye cream is good. It does help with the wrinkles, but sometimes you need something that's going to penetrate a little bit deeper. So this is one of my products that if I'm waking up early in the morning and I notice a little bit more puffiness or allergies, I'll take this with the applicator and I'll literally massage it into the under eye area and massage it on the eyelid and up here. And you'll see one eye to the next, you have a lot less puffiness. Okay? So this I love. It's the Capture Eye Serum. Now, if you not, how many of you are using a serum for your face? Everyone's using a serum for your face? Just moisturizer. Okay, so serum is so much more important, okay? So I want you, if you're not using a great serum for your face, I want you to write down list serum from Capture, okay? This is going to penetrate deeper than the moisturizer does, so it's going to enhance and make your skin look better than just using a moisturizer. So those three are my top skincare must-haves. When it comes to fragrance, I don't want to forget, so I'm going to let you know the sexiest, most beautiful floral fragrance, hopefully everybody likes flowers, I do, um, is Jador. I mean, come on. Like, everyone likes Jador, right? I love it. I think it's so beautiful. It's so sexy. So I definitely want to... Do you like Jador? Okay. Let me just give you a little bit. Here. So what I do, I don't like to drown. You don't want to walk by and leave a trail. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You want to give like a sexy like, ooh, what is she wearing? Not like a cloud of, oh, she put the whole bottle. So a little bit goes a long way with Jador. I absolutely am obsessed with this fragrance. My mom always takes all the new variations of Jador from me, but this is definitely a must-have scent. If you have seen the videos and the pictures online of Charlize, she's an amazing spokesperson, and she embodies the fragrance Jador, which is sexy and sophisticated. So let me start doing makeup really quick. Okay, so I've already done some prep Okay, you see we have a lip. I know you didn't come here to watch a lipstick application. <laughs> okay, so I already mapped out what I wanted to do in the makeup. So I'm going to do a little bit of a, a soft smoky eye with a bright lip, which is one of my favorite combos. And it just goes to show you that you can wear color in your eyes and lips at the same time without looking too harsh. Okay, I'm also going to show you contouring and highlighting my way because um, you see like the Kim Kardashian... Uh, 
tutorial. And, yeah. and that's cool, you know, if you're doing the theatrical contouring and highlighting. But um, I feel like a lot of people follow that, and not every face needs all the highlighting. So I'm going to let you know, like, um, the differences. So how many of you have a little bit full cheeks? Fuller cheeks here, okay? So if you have fuller cheeks, and you know how they say to put the light triangle, and you, the, in every contour highlight tutorial, they say to put the light, and you want to make it really light. If you have light things, it's going to make things look larger. Darker things are going to make things look smaller. So if you have full cheeks, I like to call them chubby cheeks or cherub cheeks, cute. If you have full <laughs> cheeks, and you put that triangle there, and you make it very light, it's going to make that look bigger, okay? So... You don't need that if you have full cheeks. And what if you have very strong jawline, very strong cheekbones? You don't need to do that sculpting, carving out of your jawline because it's going to make your face look very um, skeletal, like really sunken in and, and not really beautiful, okay? And the same is true with the nose. You can pinch your nose, um, but just make sure that when you do it, it doesn't look like two straight lines down your nose and then the highlighter is so obvious. I saw a woman in Atlanta, she was walking around and she had so much highlighter on her nose that it looks like she literally had this product like sitting on her face. It was like that intense. And she's like, oh, and I was like, oh wow, you, you, you used a lot of highlighter today. So I like certain things to be in the background and certain things to be in the foreground. I love lashes, I love eyeliner, I love eyeshadows. I love different shapes and textures and variations of eyebrows. I love bold lipstick. I also love a nice nude lipstick. But I don't love a ton of contouring and blush and all that stuff. Because I feel like those things need to be a little bit less obvious. Okay? So, um, I am going to do a really quick demo for you. And I have some brushes here. I just need to get like one or two more. You see, they put me on all this medicine. No, it was the spider bit me. You see that? Yeah, you see? Yeah. I think it was from a hotel. Cheese me. So, uh oh. So, guys, come on. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to first start off with a little bit of the contouring. So, before we get into the contouring, I want to let you know, we don't just have on lipstick. We do have on foundation. The foundation that we use is the spray, okay? So we put the Dream Skin on as the last step to our skincare, and then we did our airbrush makeup, which is called Air Flash. We don't put on powder right after that, and this is why. When we're doing our contours and our highlighting, we don't want to contour and highlight on powdered surfaces because it's gonna be harder to blend, okay? So I'm gonna go with a decent contour here. I feel like I'm gonna do the number four. Let's see. Yeah, so I'm gonna do the number four for contouring. Now let me have you turn this way, and let me just have you suck in your cheeks a little bit, like this. Okay, so when you suck in your cheek, you're gonna see a line, and I'm gonna do the map just so you see. And then we're going to do a little bit over here as well. OK. Then we'll do a little bit here. And then we'll do a little bit here. OK. So if you can just turn this side and then the other side so that the ladies can see. You see that? That's basically where we're going with the contouring. OK. The product that we're doing is Fix It. and. Um, we're actually putting it underneath, and I'm gonna show you how to blend it so that everything is blended perfectly. You gotta make sure that your lines line up if you want symmetrical contouring, okay? So, the way that you do that is always do this until you get comfortable with it, okay? Suck in your cheek a little bit. Okay, don't go too close to your mouth as well. Okay, turn this way a little bit for me. And here. Now when it comes to your nose, I want to give you a little tip. So when it comes to contouring your nose, the closer the lines are together, the more pinched or smaller the nose will appear. 
the further apart they are, the more wide the nose. So if you put the lines too close, it's going to make it look like you have plastic surgery. <laughs> and that may be a look that you like, OK? And then a little bit here. And then a little bit here. OK? So if I wanted to do a stronger contour, I could have gone with the darker color. And this is, this is something that you would see on Instagram. You see like a very fair person, and they put really, really dark. But I just wanted to let you know that this one is going to show up a lot more obvious. So it could be cool if you're going out to a party. So if you're looking for your contour, you can get the number four and the number five. And you know it just depends on the level. Daytime, you shouldn't go too strong, OK? So what I'm going to do now is just blend. So just blend this out. Now blend one side just so you see. Now why do we put the contour underneath the jawline? Why do we do that? Question for you. Yeah. It's, uh, it pulls it in a little bit. It gives you the illusion of a longer neck, okay, which is very model-esque. Models are hired because of their neck is very long. So it just gives you the illusion, okay? <laughs> now, you're going to be doing your makeup, and you're going to always hear me say, when in doubt, blend it out. So when you're doing your makeup, you're going to hear me. I'm going to pop up like on your shoulder. I don't know a left one or right one, depending on your mood. And you're going to hear me say, when in doubt, blend it out. If you ever see any line in your contouring, don't add more. Don't take it away. Just blend it out. You have to diffuse it. This is going to be the rule when it comes to your eye makeup. This is going to be the rule when it comes to your lip liner. If the lip liner looks too strong, when in doubt, blend it out. OK, that's always my rule. But you blend it out without adding more product. The more product you add, it's going to start to be very muddy, OK? Let's see, and turn this way a little bit. You see how we did? Good. And then this way, turn this way. OK, very natural, all right? So let's just blend this out. Now, another thing when you're doing the nose contour, if your lines are not lined up properly, you can make your nose look crooked, OK? In the same breath, Make sure that you're not taking like a cardboard or something like that and putting it down the side of your nose because then it's going to make you look crazy, okay? <laughs> and if you are interested in this brush that I'm using, this is the same brush that I would use to put on the foundation, so you don't need to have two brushes. Keep it simple, okay? And you see, when you blend out the contour, you have a nice sculpting on the cheek. And sometimes you go with your finger as well as the brush. And let me just step back and see how we did. Nice. I just got to check the nose. Make sure that we blend it. I think we did good. You see the contours? OK, but it doesn't look too strong. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little blush. We're going to do the highlighter at the end. But the blush that I'm going to add, I want to add because I did the pink. So I think that every woman, when it comes to blush, um, you need two color profiles. So does everyone like pink? Yeah. And how about orange or corals? Yeah, I feel like everyone needs both, to be honest with you, because it depends on what you're wearing. So sometimes if you have on cool colors and you do the opposite when it comes to your wardrobe, something is off. Like sometimes you need to adjust and make something a little bit warmer. So I feel like the two basic color profiles for every woman or people that wear makeup um, is just basically corals and pinks, OK? Um, you being red hair. Um, you have to be careful that the pink is a little bit more like a salmon pink and not blue pink. Because if it's blue pink, it's going to throw you off. Okay? So, 
for this look, I am going to be doing my favorite blush in the world. This is so gorgeous. And I do see a lot of golden skin in here, okay? Golden skin, I don't say yellow skin, I say golden, okay? <laughs> golden is more fabulous, yes? So if you have golden skin, pink is your best friend, okay? Pink is what's going to give the skin radiance. It's going to bring out the natural uh, flush and rosiness in your cheeks. So if you have golden skin, rosy glow is amazing on you. This is a self-adjusting blush, so I don't want you to feel that it looks bright, because I know it looks bright. When I first saw it, I was like, whoa, this is bright. But look what happens when it hits your skin. Smile for me. Yay, I love it. This is, um, it works with your body chemistry to give you your own flush, your natural flush. I always like to show, let me see here, and flip. It gives you this, okay? You see this? This is what it gives you. It gives you your natural flush, you see? This color in here is what you, what you want in your cheeks. Let's see. That's pretty. You see it doesn't look too bright when it hits the, the cheeks, okay? So over here. Let's see. Pretty. So now we are ready to move to the eye makeup. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to show you the highlighting. Now, I just put this blush on. So do I need a new brush to do my highlighter? No. No. Your contouring, your blush, your highlighter, it should go one, two, three, and everything should blend into one another. So I don't recommend cleaning the brush in between. I don't recommend using three separate brushes. Use the same brush so you're gonna get harmony. The next day, and this brush is number 16, by the way, the next day, tissue it off, clean your brushes like once every other week if you're using you know, the same colors. If you're changing up your colors in your eye makeup, clean your brushes you know, a lot more regularly because you don't want the purples mixing with the browns. So make sure that you're cleaning your brushes like every other week. Um, and now we're gonna do our highlighter. A Little bit on the tip of the nose. A little bit here and here. And how many of you like this lip shade? It's so pretty and it's a matte. I love matte lips. Um, the shade is called Exuberant. Um, and I'll get you the number if you like it. The number is 787. And this looks good on every skin tone. From light to dark, it looks great on everyone. And I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting underneath the brow with this. And I just feel like I'm blocking you guys over here, like I'm giving you like a little bit too much backside, yeah? Okay, I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do, my love, I'm gonna have you just hop up for really quick. And I'm just gonna move the chair forward. Thank you. Okay, I just noticed that, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so a little bit here as well, high cheekbone. So if you're being lazy with your makeup, like one day you're being lazy, you can totally just take a little bit of this highlighter with your finger and dust it across your eyes. Um, you can also wet these. So if you want something more intense if you're going out and you want like a metallic gold eyelid, you can just dampen your brush, not so that it's soaking, but just a little damp and dust it across your eye. It's so pretty. And I feel like for the eye makeup, I want to do... Let's just check the time, yeah. Um, I think I want to do for the eyes, this palette that's called Feel. Yes, because I feel amazing today. And this is probably by far my favorite palette because you can do mild to wild in the same palette. It's so good. I've done like really simple looks with this and I've done really elaborate looks with the same palette. So that's what I love most about it. It's neutral, but it's not boring. And this is the look, okay? It's so pretty. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. 
because I like the look of this. So I'm going to highlight with this today. So I'm just going to add a little bit more underneath the brow. And I'm going to add a little bit in the inside of the eye. Let's see. Nice. Okay. Over here, same deal. And a lot of times people forget to highlight in the inner corners of the eyes. Um, never forget that. And also when you're doing it, make sure that the color isn't too white. Because if you take a picture or a selfie for Insta, um, if it's too white, it's going to look like you have something in your eyes. Okay? So you see that beautiful golden highlight? I love that for the summer. Now let's start building up some contrast and some drama. So for the eyelid, Everyone looks great in a bronze. So I'm going to do bronze eyelid. And while we're doing the eyelid, we're going to have a conversation about eye shapes in general because there's a lot of different eye shapes in here. Okay? So what do you think the hardest eye shape to make up is? Is it Asian eye? Is it hooded eye? Is it deep set eye? What do you think? That's a question for you. For me, hooded eye. Everyone knows what a hooded eye is? A hooded eye is an eye that when you have the eye open, the crease is collapsing over the eyelid. And it doesn't matter your age. Like, Jennifer Lawrence has a hooded eye. So you have to know, you have to know where to place the colors if you have a hooded eye. Some people that have hooded eyes, they say, oh, you know, I shouldn't wear eye makeup. You should wear eye makeup because you need to use the eye makeup to lift up your eyes, okay? So that's going to be a conversation that you're going to have with your makeup artist because the placement of the colors may be a little bit different. Let's see. Now, I think that we need a beautiful shading in the crease of the eye, right? Now, would I use this brush to do the crease of the eye as well? Yes or no? Uh, Who says yes? Trick question. But I just want to see where your, where your heads are. No. No. Because this brush is designed to apply colors, OK? So this is the brush number 21. We need a contouring brush for the eyes to give you that beautiful blend that you need. So that brush is number 22. And what we're going to do is use the center color this brush is very similar to the number 16. It's just a lot smaller. We're going to use this. Tap off the excess. You always tap off the excess. When you don't tap off the excess, all of your eyeshadows crumble underneath your eyes. So we tap off the excess, and we start working this color in the crease of the eye. Let's see. That's beautiful if you like a natural makeup, OK? You see the difference in the introduction of the third color? And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So right in the crease of the eye. And you just do back and forth, back and forth, and tilt a little bit back. So you do back and forth, back and forth. And those of you that like natural makeup, this will be enough for you with a little bit of eyeliner and mascara. Let's see. Good. OK. So now we're going to make it a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to go back to my number. Which number is this? 21. Yeah. I'm going to go with my 21. And I want to put some of this beautiful wine shade on the eyelid. But only on the outside, though. Let's 
see? And you see how that kind of lifts up the eyes a bit? And you see where I want us to do like a little bit of a lift? So you can lift up your eye without doing a checkmark eyeliner, and that's very popular. Um, I normally don't like checkmark liners. I like, if I extend the eye, I like to take it out, like more Cleopatra. That's just a personal preference. You can do it up, but I feel like you look like you're trying to lift up your eyes. Okay? <laughs> Let's see. Pretty, pretty. Okay, so now let me just do my eyeliner and mascara. Um, I just wanted to also let you know that we did use the Lash Maximizer 3D. Um, this is one of my makeup must-haves for everyone. It helps to make your lashes stronger. It lifts, separates, and curls. It also provides you something that the eyeshadow particles can fall onto so that they don't fall underneath your eyes, okay? So load this up every day. Um, when you take your makeup off, you're gonna start to notice when you look at your cotton round that it's not full of eyelashes. Because if you like a very strong mascara like I do, um, your lashes can become very weak and they fall out easily. So this is gonna make them stronger. This is the Lash Maximizer 3D. So we have a new mascara this is called Pump and Volume that I'm going to show you after my eyeliner. So the eyeliner that I'm going to use is our Pro Liner in Black. And I love this liner. Turn this way a little bit. I love this liner because you can make as light or as graphic of a line and you don't have to pull your skin. How many of you pull your skin when you're doing your eyeliner? Like you go like this? <laughs> yeah, with this pencil, you don't have to pull your skin. I actually don't like to pull the skin like that anyway, because if you do, sometimes the skin can start to sag. And notice that I'm going over and over the same spot. And I'm going about two thirds of the way over. Let's see, open. Ready? And turn this way a little bit for me. You know what I just noticed? You know what I just noticed? The music came back on. <laughs> I just noticed that. Oh my God. Let's see. Okay, so I'm not making the eyeliner too strong. Um, and I am going to be using a lot of mascara, okay? Uh, I am going to do something underneath, but I just want to show you the power of pump and volume mascara. Then I'm going to make some tweaks, and then our lovely model is going to give you an up-close look because I am at the time, so I want to make sure at least you guys have enough play time. So pump and volume mascara. Awesome one coat, okay? It's very good stuff. And do I do mascara at the bottom? Of course. Do I do eyeliner at the bottom? It depends on the look. I think for this eye, I'm gonna do a little bit. And I'm gonna put a little bit more eyeliner at the top as well. Uh-huh. I use a lot of the different brands, but every, every time it goes down, every time. The lashes? Yeah. They become straight? Do you use a curler? Yeah. And it's still, so use the maximizer. Yeah. I, I, you I, you I, use I, it and it still does? Yeah. Oh, man. You know, if that, if that happens, to be honest with you, see if you can find a place that does the lash permit. It's, I don't know if it's legal in California, but 
<laughs> so don't leave me any messages on, on like social media saying you recommended me something. But it's legal in certain states, so maybe if you take a trip to Oh it is? Yeah. Yeah. So you can do you can do lash permit and it really does lift up it curls up the lashes so you don't have to use the curler. And then you can just use the mascara. So um, I'm gonna make some tweaks, but I just wanted to kind of give you a preview of this makeup. You feel um, the makeup is nice? You like it? Yes. I do. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna add some more eyeliner. I'm gonna do some at the bottom, but I definitely want to make sure that you guys have playtime. I know that we started a little bit late because we were doing a photo shoot. Yes, I love it. I'm gonna have to go powder my face so I can come back and take a picture. Yes. <laughs> so um, you guys remember my must-have products, and your Dior Show artists when they come out, they're going to let you know the must. -have have products that eye serum the the uh, dream skin the Le serum for the face and then the few uh, makeup products like the maximizer 3d pump and volume mascara as well as the fragrance j'adore okay so I just wanted to say thank you and um, have a great great day thank you, thank you.